Welcome stamping friends. This is Jenny from Celebrate the Journey and I am a member of the Global Inspiration Stamp Team so I'm joining you today with the um, summer fun cards. I think that's what fun in the sun cards um, that we are sharing with you and I'm doing this virtual recorded because we're on vacation, but I still wanted to be able to share with you and participate in the um, two days of fun in the sun. So I hope you will tolerate this recording. I have a confession to make. This is my second time. The first one, I got tongue-tied. My measurements were off. It was just a disaster. So we're just starting over again. I, I bet you never mess up your cards and you never throw paper away and you never make mistakes, but I certainly am very good at that and I did a good job with it on my first recording. So hopefully I won't mess up too much on this one. So we're doing fun in the sun and um, I thought that I would use the Lazy Day stamp set because after a day of working in the yard or uh, going to Six Flags or uh, all those fun things you do in the summer, you might like to have some quiet time on your porch. And so we're going to make a card using this. And we're going to use some of the pretty uh, gingham, glorious gingham designer series paper. Gingham is always in style. It's always a good DSP design to use. So this is one I've used quite a bit of this one already on my cards. So Lazy Days has, has all these stamps. And then it has coordinating dies that go with it. It has 16 dies. Now when a set has this many dies, I always like to make sure I count them, keep up with them. I label everything with the number, how many dies are in there. And then I like to create just a sheet with the dies on it so that you can see what, what the dies cut out. Now some of them cut out the images and then some are like accessory dies like the clouds there's a second rocking chair that you can cut out of just uh, cardstock or DSP and then the vines and this little thing that I think is a pillow but I'm not real sure if you guys know what it is leave me a message so um, not real sure what that thing is <laughs> so we'll figure it out sooner or later and this helps you kind of keep up with what images are here when you're looking maybe you're looking for some clouds and you can get the clouds from this set to use with another set so it's always nice to have a reference of what were you what our dies are this also has some really nice sentiments um, home is where our story begins it's always a good day when you take time for yourself or it's always a good day when we spend time together. Um, it's always a good day when it's your birthday. That's a nice one. Welcome to our street would be perfect if you had new neighbors. So lots of nice sentiments that you can use. So the, let's see, we're gonna need the dies, so I'll keep those here for us. And the card we're going to make is called a Double Decker Pop-Out Card. It's really kind of a Z-fold, but then it's got this pop-out mechanism down in there. Can you see that? That lets the second layer pop out the Double Decker. Now, you can do this with circles. You could do it with rectangles. You could do it with squares. I chose to use the scallop die and then my second um, 
pop out is just a, a rectangle I cut on the paper trimmer. I'm not going to read you the measurements. I'm going to put them in the description if you want these. So um, they'll be there because I, if I start saying numbers, I'll get even more confused. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. So we're going to do some stamping first. We'll do some stamping and coloring. And we're since we're going to be using blends, we're going to stamp with Memento Black. Let's see, this sweet little side table with our drinks on it. And then we've got a little flower pot. It's a book basket of flowers and our hanging basket. Checking to make sure I've got all the, and now we have a rocking chair. I love rocking chairs. I think I better do that one this way. Might not be quite big enough. So we've got four things here. I think that's it. And so we can do our coloring. Now, of course, you can choose any colors you want when you're coloring, but I'm using um greens, browns, a little bit of reds and yellows. So for my table and my rocking chair, I'm using one of the new colors, pecan pie. And I think it looks, it makes a nice wood tone. You can the fine tip is just perfect for these straight edges. They're kind of narrow and the tip fills it in very nicely. I'm not the best color person with the blends, but I like to practice and do some shading. And I think when you're using blends, that's what it takes is practice. And we know it's just paper, so we can throw it away if we aren't happy with it. Now we'll put a little dark on the edges, the dark pecan pie. Doesn't, well, that looks pretty good. And we're going to put some lemonade in there with lemon lolly. You could put pink lemonade, regular lemonade. You could do tea, iced tea. You could do um, strawberry or soda pop. All kinds of choices here. I think since I just thought of this, it's a frosty drink, so hopefully it has ice in it. We'll put a little bit of Wink Stella, make it look shiny. Now we can do our rocking chair since we've got the brown out.
if you haven't bought pecan pie, you could use some of the new, um, the skin tone blends would work, I think. Some of those are, would, would work for wooden colors. And of course, you could use crumb cake. I don't know about early espresso might be a tiny bit too dark. Because you still want to be able to see the black ink lines that give the wood its textured look. The hard part staying inside the lines. But hopefully I won't go out too much. I think if you do these short little strokes, then that kind of helps you stay in the space. Okay, and now we can do a little bit of shading here. <clears throat> I miss that little back leg. Well, just do that a little bit darker. It's so easy to miss small spaces. Okay, now we have our basket of, looks to me like it's a hosta, so I'm going to do that with the crumb cake. We're going to use light and dark so you can... Hopefully make it look a little more realistic. Let's see, here's our dark one. Do the slats a darker color. And then a little now we'll come back over and blend that in. Looks pretty good. And now we're going to do our plant. And I'm going to use Granny Apple Green for this one. We'll do light and dark. Make it be two toned leaves. Leaves come in all shades of green. I always have to read these. The caps don't always catch my 
don't always let me know what color they are because seems to me some of the caps are very close in color to each other. So I like to make sure I, even though I put these labels on them, I've sometimes put the wrong label on, on the marker. Imagine that. That looks pretty good. Now for our next plant, we'll use Lemon Lime Twist. I think that's what I pulled, yeah. Since it's a different color plant. I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like ivy. It's just some green leafy plant. Thought you could almost put some little dots in there and give it give it some blossoms. If you wanted to. But I'd need to play with that and see if I it might not come out the way I think in my mind. And then our little hanging pot is Sweet Sorbet. Another pretty color. I think of all the new colors we have, Lemon Lolly is my favorite. I have been waiting and waiting for a pretty yellow and so I was excited. It's stamped so pretty and the colors so pretty. But I like a lot of our other colors too, so I can't complain. <laughs> All right, so now we can die cut our pieces. I'm going to do these two at a time. So we'll do the little table. I like to use this repositionable post-it note tape to keep my dies from sliding around. And you can use it over and over again until it finally loses its sticky or disintegrates. We'll get those ready and then go ahead and get these lined up there's our little hanging basket Okay, I think that'll do it. That's all of the dies we're going to use out of today. It would be cute to use the little birdhouse, but I didn't plan on that, so. <laughs> Maybe the next time we'll use our Boho Mini Cut and Emboss and run these through. These are nice because it, it doesn't <clears throat> take up a lot of space on your work table. And all these small dies just work perfect in this machine. That's the first one, and here's the second one. So 
Let's hope these didn't move around on us. See how our if our tape worked for us today. You do need to be a little careful when you pull that off so it doesn't tear your paper, but usually it won't. Sometimes it'll just stick pretty tight. That one came out good. That's the one that's kind of been giving me a little trouble lining up those little leaves. So, not too bad. And here's our little table. And our flower basket. Our porch is going to be beautiful. I'm real anxious to see what everybody else does for their fun in the sun cards. I'll be watching, even though we'll be on vacation, I'm still going to watch. So now we're ready to put our card together. And we'll just start layering our DSP on here. You want to get this part done first before you start putting the um, folding mechanism in your card because it does get glued to your DSP layer. Now if you are a, I'm a Tombow user mostly Sometimes I'll use the stamp and seal, and sometimes I'll use tear and tape. The majority of the time, I, I'm a Tombow. So you can use the adhesive of choice. Whichever makes I know some people have a hard time with Tombow because I think they use too much. So my rule is a dot is a lot. It does, it's just a very thin line of Tombow. And if it does ooze out, you can let it dry and then get one of those gum erasers and erase your extra glue. And then I you will take a little bit of like baby powder or talcum powder and tap on the where the glue is to kind of dry it up. Or you could use your embossing buddy. But baby powder smells better, doesn't it? Okay, so there's our card. And that's going to be our fold. Now we've got a little bit more stamping to do to put our layers together. So the wider one is the front. And this is our inside Uh, second deck, I guess is what we'll call it, uh, since it's a double decker card. I'm going to use some pool party and a blending brush and just put a little bit of sky up there. You could use yellow if you wanted it sunny, but I am using blue for blue sky, pale pool party. 
<coughs> was actually trying to figure out how, you know how <coughs> the ceiling of uh, porches in the south are haint blue. And I was trying to figure out how I could do that without it looking silly. I couldn't figure it out. So We'll just have blue sky. Just a hint of that. Now in our stamps, we have, in this stamp set, we have um, a stamp that is the floor. And I didn't get that out. So here it is. It looks like a wooden floor. So we'll put that on a block and we're going to put our you could call it a deck, you could call it a porch. This lines up. You don't even have to worry about lining it up. It just looks good. All you have to do is stamp it and it comes out just right. I smeared a little there, but we'll take care of that. You can even see the nails in the wood, wooden floor. There we go. So far I haven't messed up too bad. I'm proud of myself. I have one of these little ink erasers and we'll just lighten that spot up. Hopefully it won't show too bad. It just means your card was handcrafted. Ah, that looks pretty good. You don't want to erase a hole in, in your paper. So now we, oh, we need to stamp our sentiment here. So it's going to say, um, hmm. I think I will do that when I pulled that out. So on the front, it's going to say it's always a good day. And on the inside, it's going to say when it's your birthday. So. We're going to stamp that with Knight of Navy. Even though this is blueberry bushel, I like my sentiments dark, so I thought the Knight of Navy might be a little easier to read. We'll go ahead and stamp the front sentiment it's always a good day since I have the ink out. And I got this like washi tape label from the gorgeously made dies. But any label that you have will work. Or you could just do a strip of paper and snip it and it will work fine. Because we're just going to put that on with dimensionals to give it a little lift on the front of our card. We're ready for that one to get layered. And we'll put our table there. could have just stamped this directly on the card, but I kind of liked it die cut. OK, 
Okay, now we've got our second layer. Now I went ahead and pre-cut the chair rail and a piece of, I didn't want the um, side column bar on the porch. I just wanted the little gingerbread across the top. And I found out when you die cut this, you end up with a sweet little scalloped edge that you could save and use on another card. Or if you don't have a scallop edge, then you could use this to make a scallop edge. So we're going to try to center that a little bit so it's kind of centered on the top of our card, our little image, and then we'll trim it off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I got glue on my fingers. And let's see what else we've got to go here. We're, we're going to put our chair rail here. I think I'll just use parts of that. I won't use the whole thing. So we'll I guess this is a banister. Is that what it is? Oh, let's put our chair. Where's our Make sure our chair is going to fit. Yep. I want to crowd it out. This is like playing with paper dolls, isn't it? All these fun little pieces. I loved paper dolls when I was little. I probably wouldn't mind playing with paper dolls now. Now we've got our hanging baskets. You could do the little basket or you could do the birdhouse. Both of those would look real cute here. I'll put that right about there. We need to put this before we put our basket so we'll know where that goes. That on with dimensionals. And we'll put this on with the dimensionals. And we'll put that so it's kind of just sitting on there. Now we need some bling, of course. So I'm going to use some of the brushed butterflies. They are so sweet. And let's see what we need to pick them up. So we're going to get a bigger one. Or here. I like these because they're flat and sometimes if you have too much stuff on your card it gets kind of lumpy and these are nice and flat. So it wants to mm -hmm. I'll put it right there. I was trying to get that on there. So part of our um, ordering special for this two-day event is that if you place an order with one of us, then whoever you place an order with will send you a sample 
of some bling, so I picked the butterflies, and you would get this little sample of brushed butterflies as a thank you. All right, I think we're about ready here. I love all our bling. Some more than others, but I use it all. I like bling better than ribbon, mostly. All right, now this next part is where we're going to create our holding mechanism. I'm going to show you that. So it's actually just a square of cardstock, a little box, and it folds and smushes down inside. So we have this two by three, two and a quarter by three inch piece of paper, and it's scored. So I will put those measurements for you. This is one place that I messed up last time, so I'm not going to do it this time. So we're going to glue this here. You don't want it right on your score line. You want it back a little bit because it does create, it would be too thick and it would not fold well. When you fold this too, when you're scoring it, you want to make sure there's no overlap that these two cut edges meet right in the center. So if you have to do a little trimming, you can do that. And we'll just put this in the center and it should work out. Now this edge needs to adhere to this edge so that technically that's what the card folds to. So if you fold it this way and then put your Tombow or adhesive here, fold your flap over, We'll hold it down for a minute. Well, a couple seconds. I want to make sure it's stuck on there. And now we have our little box. Now, if you wanted to use tear and tape on that, that would be fine. But the Tombow, this is not going to be played with a whole lot, so I think Tombow will just be fine. Now we're ready to put our pieces in there. So this one, again, will come here, and you don't want it flush up there. You want it just a hair, tiny hair away from the edge. I think the first time you make this is the hardest, and, but it's not really that hard. <laughs> if you've ever made one of those flop and pop and circle cards with a box in it, this is similar. All right, that's ready. Now we're ready to put our front piece on. And we're going to put it on with dimensionals just on, so they will only go on this side. And I'm putting a lot on there just to keep it stable. I don't know if it takes that many or not. Now 
And we want to make sure that we're not letting our second decker peek out. And it's folded up. And now, isn't that cute? Makes you feel like you're magic. It's always a good day when it's your birthday. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make a double-decker pop-out card. And don't worry about the measurements. I will post them for you so you can see them later. And I appreciate you joining us today and joining me today. I hope you'll share some of your creations with us at, that you've learned from our Fun in the Sun event. Happy stamping!